this week on the Husky Update. The Northeastern Athletic Hall of Fame induction. Increased storm capacity. A mayor's farewell speech. And a tragic concert. All this and more in this week's episode of the Husky Update. Your campus. Your news. All the time. From the Showman Studio, here is the Husky Update. On Thursday, November 11th, Northeastern held a ceremony to celebrate the induction of several athletes into the Northeastern Athletic Hall of Fame. Laura Chimlewski, Jennifer Forbes, Donald Hayburn, Fiona Rice, Mike Tamson, Brad Thiessen, and the 1988 field hockey team were all honored. These athletes have had other athletic success, such as Mike Tamson, who was a baseball player with the most hits in Northeastern history, and Laura Chimlewski, who was the two-time New England women's indoor pole vault champion in 2004 and 2006. The Hall of Fame Class of 2020 was also recognized at this event due to their induction celebration being postponed because of the pandemic. Now to Jenna with Rapid Fire. Thanks, Adam. I'm Jenna Chin, and this is Rapid Fire. In local news, on November 2nd, Michelle Wu was the first woman and first person of color to be elected as mayor of Boston. The issues she ran on and policies she's looking to focus on include closing the racial wealth gap, offering free public transit, and instating a Green New Deal agenda, to lead the initiative against climate change, to name a few. Wu's election into office means acting Mayor Kim Janey's eight-month tenure in office has come to an end. On Wednesday, November 10th, she presented a farewell address, sharing the initiatives that had occurred throughout her term. These included a tourism campaign, the home buyer campaign, new energy standards, and a vaccine mandate for city workers. She expressed pride about being the first woman and person of color to have held the mayoral position as well as her confidence in Wu for the following term. She concluded by showing gratitude towards the people of Boston, stating, our city is better because of you. In national news, tragedy struck on November 5th at Travis Scott's performance at Astroworld 2021, when the crowd ended up in a crowd crush. Despite the event being declared a mass casualty event at 9.38, Travis Scott did not stop his performance until 10.15. Nine people died from the crowd crush and 11 more went into cardiac arrest. The victims' ages range from 14 to 27. Hundreds more were treated for injuries. Travis Scott has since come forth and announced he will pay for the victims' funerals. In international news, on November 5th, Portugal's parliament passed new legislation to support work-life balance for remote workers. The laws established fines for employers who contact employees outside of working hours. Another new policy requires employers to help pay for expenses incurred as a result of employees working remotely such as internet and electricity bills. Employers must also meet with employees every two months to avoid isolation. However, this legislation will not apply to companies with fewer than 10 employees. In addition, legislators voted not to pass a law that would have allowed employees the right to disconnect, to turn off work devices outside of working hours. Other countries are also considering new labor laws to promote employees' health. A study in Iceland found higher employee satisfaction and productivity with a four-day work week. Spain and Japan are planning to test this reduced work week as well. That's all for Rapid Fire. Back to you, Adam. Thanks, Jenna. After a record number of applications and new students on campus, Northeastern University is struggling to house all the new students. On October 4th, the university submitted a 56-page filing to the Boston Planning and Development Agency to amend the institutional master plan to increase the bed counts in both the International Village and the East Village residence halls. In each building, singles will be converted to doubles and doubles to triples. After being approved by the BPDA, Senior Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Madeline Essebrook, sent an email to students stating that the university would be moving ahead with these changes. However, there will be no housing adjustments made until after the spring semester ends. That's the news. The rest is up to you. Be sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with the Husky Update. My name is Am Viazanko. Thank you for watching.